birds you know in cheetah plains? Have a look there. Long grass. Does anyone see anything? Oh, there we go. Oh, right. Duh. <laughs> there he is. Found him. He was so flat that we could barely see him. He was so beautifully hidden. There we go. Big yawn. Perfect timing. Because if he's yawning like this, there he goes. Up he gets. Where are you going to head off to now, mister? It amazes me how big this massive male leopard's territory is. So compared to Hasana, for our new viewers that you've been looking at with Byron, this is a proper dominant male leopard in the prime of his life. Okay, and we're going to try and follow him because there's a good chance as it starts to get dark that he's going to start to call. Let us try and find a way through here. I'm going to have to go quite slowly. It's very thick. And I would prefer to avoid the possibility of a flat tire. I fear as though I might have made a grievous error here. I have. Because he's looking at that tree. Okay, we're going to have to go around. Made life a bit difficult for myself there. All right, everybody, here we go. Whoopsie. Um, how ready are you to fend off trees, Seb? Ready? No stress. No stress. The VR is a minor stress. I can feel Rollo's heart rate increase from behind me. He's in the tree. Perfect. <laughs> You winning there, Rollo? Got it. I'll explain in a second. I have introduced Rollo several times, but I'll explain for our new viewers as well. You want to go back? You reverse, uh, quite a nice oh, perfect. Has he got a leaf in front of his face? E nope. Perfect. Flat cat on a marula branch. That is epic. Perfect. Thank you, boy. I was worried you were going to lie down in the grass again, and then we wouldn't have been able to see you properly at all. Now we've got this gorgeous view. Oh, I think he wants to go further up. Which way are you going, mister? <laughs> Did you not think this one through? Brief peekaboo. Oh, that is stunning. Oh, thank you. You could not have made that any more perfect if you'd tried. <laughs> Tingana in a marula tree at sunset. I don't think it gets much better than that. Oh, one big paw draping down. The one thing I love about Tingana, I don't know what it is about him, but um, there's something about Tingana's facial expression. He looks like a man with the weight of the world on his shoulders. That's just my impression of Tingana. That slightly droopy-eyed expression. He just looks so sad all the time. Like he's got deep concerns. And I suppose, as a dominant male leopard, he's got lots of hard work that he needs to do. He needs to patrol constantly. And Tingana does have a massive, massive territory. So that is pretty much keeping him on the move constantly. Yesterday, when Byron saw him, he was to the far northwestern corner of Juma, south of that on Hoffman's. And before, even before that, where Byron found him, he was even further west of that on Arethusa. He's now as far east in his territory as he can go, and he went straight through Torchwood on his way here. So Tingana is, he is not a lazy leopard by any stretch of the imagination. He's been kept very busy. It's good to see, though, that he's had some time to eat in between. Somebody looks as though he's got a full belly. Now, compared to Hosanna, he's probably about double his size, possibly even more, actually, looking at them both. Now, George, sorry, you're asking about leopard territories, but I just want to double check because sometimes our communications aren't terribly clear. Alice, what about, does what mean a change of territories? 
Scent marking. Scent marking. Okay, so does George wants to know if scent marking means a change of territories? No, not at all, not necessarily. Scent marking most of the time, a large portion of the time, means a keeping of a territory. And it's not necessarily establishing one, but maintaining it. So he has to constantly patrol. His scent is not going to stay on his boundaries forever. And so he's got to rotate round and round and round and round, scent marking bushes to make sure that, oh, I know it's hard work, isn't it? To make sure that he keeps that scent there so another male leopard doesn't think that he can just come in. But yes, if there is a shift in territories, then there is an increase in scent marking. And by scent marking, what we mean is literally just that, urinating on the bushes around them. And then what male leopards will do is they'll also scrape their feet, especially their back feet, in the urine itself and on the ground, and basically transfer the scent of their urine in between their toes so that it follows them as they walk. And a lot of animals do that. Rhino do that as well. And what I'm hoping is we'll get the second part of the whole territorial patrol as well this evening. And when Tingana does decide to come down from his marula tree, he might start to give his territorial call or his roar. And that's that deep sawing sound that we so unsuccessfully tried to imitate on World Leopard Day. Well, I know I was unsuccessful, can't speak for the others. I'm not moving. We've got prime position. We're definitely not moving out. And Laura B in Alabama, you want to know if Hos if Tingana would potentially kill Hosanna if he ran into him. I'm not sure about that. Obviously, there is a distinct possibility, a very strong possibility, that Tingana is the father of Hosanna. He knows Hosanna, he's met Hosanna, and they've shared kills many times with Tingana. Karula and the two cubs in Tingana have all sat together and eaten together. And as the dominant male leopard, it would be counterintuitive to kill his own cub. However, Karula hasn't been in the area for a long time, and I'm not sure if that would play any kind of a role in Tingana's response to her. I'm not 100% sure. But leopards do strange things. Leopards will... Leopards don't read the textbooks. Leopards will surprise us. I don't think he would but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about being a young male and being booted out of your father's territory in a bit, but speaking of the two leopards that we have, let's go from the father to the son. Yeah, well, it's amazing that we... Yeah, it just shows you how things can change in the bush. Now we've got two leopards to show you. A big male, and then apparently his son. Well, we all seem to think so, and I do think Tingana is probably the father of this male leopard, this young male. And um, But they're quite far from each other, and it just shows you how large that big male leopard's territory is. Um, because they're probably a few kilometers from where we are on cheetah plains. Now, it is interesting, I think, if that male... Um, the big male had moved into this area and, and smelt this kill, he would definitely scavenge it from his son. He would take it away and feed on it and probably chase his son off. This young male leopard, they do do that from time to time, the big male leopards. If they find females with a kill or younger leopards with kills, they'll definitely chase them off and finish what's left. Look at those teeth. Is he, it's amazing how he started feeding on the skull. There's obviously some soft meat there that he's, you can see, but he's really, really fed on most of the, the, the meat around the skull. Um, but, and actually that's a lovely view of him feeding there now. You see how he's using the side of his mouth to eat. You see, the, now I've mentioned this a few times before. 
I've mentioned this before, um, but it's the carnassial shear, the back teeth of the leopard, the, the molars and premolars overlap slightly and they act as a scissor motion, so it's easy to tear and break down the meat, so that's what they use to, to chew some of the meat and tear it off. They will use their front teeth to tear open bits of the carcass, but they'll use those powerful back teeth to really eat the meat, and that's known as the carnassial shear. I'm going to sit here a little bit longer, but Taylor's got a beautiful sunset she'd like to show you quickly. We do, we do, my goodness, I don't know what's wrong with me today. We do, that would have been a good deer joke. <laughs> but uh, I think that we're exceptionally lucky this afternoon because I thought that we weren't going to get a view of the sunset. But luckily for us, it was a small gap in the clouds. And isn't that absolutely stunning? And for me, there's only one way to end a day in Africa. And that's, of course, to end it with a sunset and that we indeed have this fine afternoon now there's actually some life here can you believe it I'm just coming around this side there's some crested Franklins they're just coming through here now a whole family of them mom and dad and some juveniles you might see them pop out into the open for now they're just behind the shrubs but what they're going to do is they're probably going to look for a nice high point <clears throat> where they can position themselves and do well the male will do one last call for the evening they've gone a bit scared there's a few coming from the back now come on forward because there's a nice open patch and it would be perfect for us to see them now we won't be getting any silhouettes unfortunately of uh, the crested franklins there's someone else calling down there let's let's maybe move this way just a little bit and see if we can't get a view of them come on guys where did you go i feel like i'm at home and i should be going kip 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 with the chickens oh there they are it worked <laughs> i don't think that worked i think it was me spooking them bye bye off they go running away all the little chicks and hopefully they make it through the night because there's plenty of things out here as the sun starts to set that will come out and find them a very tasty morsel now we're going to keep on moving going dodging through drainage lines and all sorts of fun things which is nice in the fading light, but I'm going to send you across to something else that's even better, sitting in a tree and eating an impala. Now, he's moved slightly, everyone. Have a look at him. He's just decided to, um, to change his position a little bit. He's been pulling that carcass. Yeah, he's, he's got it by the neck, and he's just moving it slightly higher up into the tree, trying to reposition it. Getting another <laughs> vehicle to reposition quickly. Oh, that's such a nice view of him. Look at that. Wow, that is beautiful. <laughs> My friend Chris wanted to be famous here for a second, so he tried to get into the camera. <laughs> Beautiful. That is, see, now watch how agile he is moving around that tree. He's been positioning, moving that carcass a little bit higher up. That is really, really special. Look how well camouflaged he is up in that tree at the moment. Um, he was trying to, he was trying to, like I said, reposition that carcass, but I don't think he had much luck. I don't know if he knows where he wants to put it. Um, now I'm not sure, I think I've lost comms with Alice here. Alice, if you want to link quickly, go for it. Um, okay, Alice, I got you there. What did you say? Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't, I just lost Alice there for a second. Uh, 
you see now that carcass is now hanging in a position that if a hyena had to come past they would easily be able to pull that down from there see that so there's actually not much left of the the kind of the hind quarters and the stomach area you can see it's fed on most of that that's why I say this kill was definitely made yesterday um, I think possibly yesterday afternoon maybe fed on it for most of the night and this morning We'll have, to, we'll have to find out from James why he didn't find this leopard this morning. I suppose he was in the tent. But that's no excuse, James. <laughs> you can see he's cleaned up that, that skull quite a bit. And that's just by licking and chewing and eating parts of it. Like I said, there's some soft parts of the of the antelope there that they enjoy feeding on probably a lot of nutrients and it is a young male you can see those horns again so just as we thought it's a young male it's not a um, not a full-grown male that would have been rutting some of you were asking, do, you, do we think, was it a male's ratting that possibly got distracted and he managed to hunt one of them, but it's not a full-grown male, so he wouldn't have been ratting this young male. K4M0, that's a lot of little <laughs> numbers and letters to remember. Um, you asked, when will this leopard need to hunt again after he's fed on this, this impala? Well, they're very opportunistic, so it all depends. They, um, they could possibly hunt immediately afterwards if some impala came past. However, um, generally speaking, once he's finished this carcass, maybe two or three days um, before he decides that he needs to, needs to hunt again, also, like I said, with them being opportunistic, they try not to get too hungry before they hunt again. But I would say that's an average after a big kill, two or three days, and then try try to hunt again. Well, the violet not necessarily because they can um, they can feed on a carcass for two days, um, two or three days sometimes. Um, a little bit of rotten meat doesn't really affect the leopards or any of the predators for that matter, like it would for us. So yeah, there's there's still good fresh meat there on that carcass, but but parts of it are most likely starting to rot a little bit. But their digestive system is much stronger than ours, so it doesn't uh, doesn't affect them like it would affect us. You see his belly's quite full too. Well, this this young leopard, I think, is very, very pleased with himself for making this kill. And as I was saying, everyone, and I think this is possibly the first time that um, young Husana has made his own kill, or substantial kill. I mean, we know he's fed on little um, mongoose and and um, and terrapins and so on, but and possibly guinea fowl or or Franklins that we maybe just haven't seen yet, but but I think of the first substantial kill, a large antelope, I think this is the first time, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, th I do think so, a kill that he's managed to make himself. Uh, now, from one leopard in a tree, Jamie's got another one. A dangling leopard in a tree, or at least dangling foot out of a tree. Tingana's taken the opportunity to have a little bit of a snooze in his marula tree. He doesn't have to worry about hoisting a kill like his son does, which means that he can sit quite contentedly. And I have to say, I think it's just the angle that we're sitting at, but he looks so compressed.
It looks like he's squashed himself right up, which has made him look a little bit like he's shaped like a barrel. Look at that belly. It's massive. Although Tingana is the king of ungainly looking poses in trees. Every time I see him, he, he just looks that little bit weird, a little bit odd. And the last time was when he stole Mbula's kill on Gallagher shortcut. Oh, shame. Biting flies, attacking his ear. Nicks and cuts that all leopards get with age as they grow older. Ah, oh, flies, you made him turn his head. We had such a beautiful view. Well, Finn, who is eight years old, Finn feels really sorry for the animals with the biting flies and would like to know if we could spray them with anything. Finn, it would be really difficult to do without scaring them and we try not to interfere too much with nature because one thing that we've learnt is that nature knows best and as little interference as we can possibly do with the animals, that's what we try and do. We don't try and interfere in any way. And it would be really difficult to go, get up to Tingana and say, listen, you sit still and I'm just going to spray you with something that will help you with the flies. Because he's not going to understand that. He's just going to think that we're doing something horrible to him. And he might be scared of people after that. And that would just be one leopard. Imagine trying to find all of them and the lions and all the antelope. We'd need tanks and tanks of bug spray. But don't worry, we, Finn, we also sit with the biting flies, so we understand what the animals go through. And it's not too bad. It irritates them a little bit, but it doesn't bother them too much. It's part of their life. That is a gorgeous screenshot that happened right there. Leopard print all the way. Now, he's been spotted by the monkeys at Cheetah Plains Lodge. And what astounds me about that is just how far away they are and the fact that they saw him. Look, he's not exactly hiding when he's up in a tree like this, but the still, the fact that they've seen him from about, I would say, 500 meters away, 500 yards, just is an important lesson to us. When we're searching for leopards and we hear monkeys alarm calling, that the leopard could be quite a lot further than we expect. Oh, that is such a graceful draping of his tail right there. Oh, there we go. Heads back f looking at the monkeys with a somewhat dismissive expression on his face. He could not be less concerned that they've seen him. He's got a comfortable tree and a full belly. It's not like he's going to try and hunt something. He could, but he's unlikely to make too much of an effort. Hansing off. Leopards are so perfect. They really are. Of all of the animals out here, they are just so beautifully designed. And I really, I really like Tingana. It makes me sad that there are people who vilify him for what happened with Shuluva and just for new viewers. And Tingana killed a female leopard a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago now. And we're still not entirely sure why he did it. He just ran in and bit her. Okay, let's just go over quickly to Asana, see what he's up to. Well, Asana is trying to get this kill out of the tree now. Oh, <laughs> he just pulled it down. I don't know why. It's probably not that comfortable feeding up in the tree. So that's why he's decided to do that. Now, we did hear some other alarm calls, it sounded like on the other side of the river, but I don't know. Or the other side of the dam, rather, not river. Oh, there's some Inyala behind us. You'll hear them barking. Just listen. Um, just for a second, just wait. So three female Inyala and a male. Just directly behind us. We're not going to show you now. Let's just watch the leopard and see what he does. But they gave little alarm calls. Just a little bark. Um, but they've stopped now. 
They've definitely seen the leopard. You see, this is actually a perfect little spot for him because he's basically on a path leading directly down to the water for a lot of the animals that uh, l sleep up on the clearing. We've seen the wildebeest walking through here, impala, then yala. So if I was a leopard, I'd hang around here for quite some time because it's a perfect spot. Ferg, shall I try and reverse a little bit? Let's just see, hang on, let me try and get us in another position quickly. Maybe if I go forward, wait. Did you see them? No. No, that's all right. No, they're directly behind us now. How's that first? Is that a bit better? Yeah, that's good. Let's see. Well, Marcel, as you asked whose territory is Osana in, well, he's in the, the big male leopard around here is Tingana. That's whose territory he's in. So Tingana will tolerate this young leopard because it is his offspring. They'll tolerate him around for a little bit longer because he's not posing a threat. But often what happens is even with male leopards, even if it is their offspring, um, when they get to an age where they're starting to look for their own territory, the dominant males, even if they are their fathers, will chase them out. Sorry, this branch, unfortunately, is directly in front of us, but we've still got a nice few of them. You can see feeding on some of those ribs at the moment. cool sighting this is awesome okay now Jamie's got Tingana again so let's go back to another leopard <laughs> Tingana staring off into the distance. How spoilt are we that we get to switch between uh, two different leopards? And I agree absolutely with Byron that I think that Tingana would tolerate Hosanna for now. As Hosanna gets older it will become harder and harder for them to tolerate each other's company or at least for Tingana to tolerate him because it's his job to defend his territory against all male leopards even one or once one reaches sexual maturity even if it's his son so that is one of the big reasons why young male leopards disperse they have to hide away from both their fathers and all other dominant males in an area it would not take kindly to their presence. Pretty eyes. Oh, that's beautiful. Cosmic, yes. Leopards, of the big cats that we see out here, leopards are the most solitary of all of them. Um, leopards and female cheetah. And leopards obviously are only seen in each other's company, or usually only seen in each other's company, when they are either mating or they have cubs. Sometimes you get odd situations where, because of course they all know each other in an area, where a dominant male might come and share a kill with a female, or her previous set of cubs will come and share with her. But for the most part they are very much solitary. Uh, cheetah, female cheetah are solitary unless they have cubs. But male cheetah form coalitions, or very often form coalitions, because it's much easier for them to establish a territory in that manner. Uh, yes, of all of the big cats, I would say the leopard is the most solitary. And I don't know, I always find when I see them mating, that it seems as though they, even though instinct drives them to mate, it seems as though actually they really would rather be on their own. They don't seem terribly impressed with each other's company. Uh, he's looking.